I'm an exchange alumnus. I'm an exchange alumna. I'm an exchange alumna. I'm an exchange alumnus. I am an exchange alumna. I'm an exchange alumna. People, places, and international exchange. Voices of Exchange delivers unforgettable first-person stories from people transformed by international exchange. And I remember these exchange alumni share stories of growth, unexpected friendship, and career inspiration from all around the world. We are, we are the Voices of Exchange. You put a frog in nice water. It's very tepid, it's comfortable and slowly you turn the flame up a little bit at a time. Gets a little warmer, it's okay. Gets a little hotter, it's getting uncomfortable. It gets boiling, and what does a frog decide to do? Does it stay or does it jump out of the water? So when people are targeted and persecuted, they have to decide, do they wanna stay or do they wanna leave? their country, and that's a hard question. What happens when you're an artist living in a tyrannical state? Do you risk your life to fight tyranny? Or do you escape your country because your gifts are valuable to the entire world? Today we meet Gail Prensky, a U.S. Arts Envoy Exchange alumna and documentary filmmaker who is working with fellow artists to create peace and unity. Gail and her team are currently working with a Mandela Washington fellow alumnus to shift the focus from bullets to books in South Sudan. This is the story of bullets to books and Gail's journey as a storyteller and envoy. You're listening to Voices of Exchange. I became an arts envoy in 2019 when I was introduced to the public affairs officer John Sebra at the U.S. Embassy in South Sudan. A team and I went to South Sudan to begin our efforts in producing a film and leading workshops for my new initiative on the Yudisha called Torban project called Bullets to Books. Bullets to Books came about when I met Jock at the Mandela Washington Fellowship Young African Leader Summit in DC. And he told me that his mission is changing minds from bullets to books. What a great tagline, right? And so I called up my one of my colleagues, Andy Trushinsky, who is an actor and producer and filmmaker in New York. And I told him about this angel I just met, Jock, from South Sudan. And Andy said, oh my God, we have to do a film documentary and help him with his mission, but also his school. He built from hand using bamboo, mud and concrete classrooms. Four of us traveled over to South Sudan and we spent about 12 days there working with various partners, also from who were Mandela Washington Fellows the year before Jock, so they were there in 2017. So there is Jacob Burbjör, who is a founder of Anna Taban, and Lupai Samuel Kenji, who is a founder of I Am Peace. And together, through their planning and organization, the Bullets to Books team were able to film interviews and, and also uh, some B-roll to produce a short documentary, to, produ to write and produce a music video and theme song, and to lead workshops with the, the entertainment community, the artists in Juba, as well as students from a few different schools. So we impacted over a hundred people while we were there in a very short amount of time. It was a life-changing experience, I think, for me and everyone. Um, and since then, our bond with 
those that we are connected in South Sudan has grown even stronger than when we were there for 12 days. And we have a number of programs, projects that we continue to do and have pl plans that I think will expand the Bullets to Books initiative, not just in Juba, but across South Sudan and hopefully across East Africa and in the United States to start. So I founded the Yudisha Kulturban Project, and when I first started the effort, it was back in the early 2000s when I had read about these artists and that they pr proposed to the Nazis that they were that they form their own cultural association to allow Jews to perform operas, dramas, symphonies, cabarets for Jewish audience only. So instead of standing down. They actually, it was a response for them to continue. I was um, taken with the idea that the Nazis accepted their proposal, which allowed the Jews to continue working because it was a self-sustaining association through membership subscriptions. When 2009, when I, when I thought, I want to really start to see the connection between the Kulturban and current day artists, I contacted um, Amnesty International to help to ask them to help me find a way to connect with other artists. So by 2014, I work with artists in DC. We did workshops to see what the connections might be. We explored the issue of um, the frog in the boiling water and that squeeze. And then I just took a deep breath and I started finding artists and interviewing them. And now we have, I think, nearly 50 current day artists interviews and stories in our shared stories collection. And what is significant is that they all believe in the power of music and art in connecting with humanity. It's a universal language and they all are deeply committed to peace and unity. So the frog and the boiling water. You put a frog in nice water. It's very tepid, it's comfortable. And slowly you turn the flame up a little bit at a time. It gets a little warmer, it's okay. It gets a little hotter, it's getting uncomfortable. It gets boiling, and what does a frog decide to do? Does it stay, or does it jump out of the water? So when people are targeted and persecuted, they have to decide, do they want to stay, or do they want to leave their country? And that's a hard question. Having a personal story is the most impactful way to connect with human beings, I think. you. The best way I can describe it is you have to start out with a big picture of the story you want to tell. You have to develop interview questions that hit, hit the different parts of the story you want to tell. And it's similar to when you come up with, let's say you want to remodel your kitchen. So you come up with an idea of the kitchen and then you break apart all the elements in the kitchen. You've got the appliances, you've got the cabinets, you've got the floor, you've got the ceiling, you've got the color paint. So you work out all the details and you make each of those details and then you put it all together and you've got a beautiful kitchen. And that's what storytelling is. You break it up into pieces, you build each of the piece, knowing what the whole picture is and you build it and then you've got a cohesive story. So the bullets to books process of how to tell a story, where I begin, uh, always begins with an interview because hearing someone's personal account is the best way to connect with people. So I started with Jock to hear his sort of life trajectory, who he was as a child, where he grew up, how he ended up in a refugee camp, 
how he decided his mission, how he got to promised land and what he wants to do moving forward. And learning all of that is then, who else do we need to bring in to get a kaleidoscope, different perspectives? And in that case, I connected with the ambassador of South Sudan to the United States and to the U.S. Embassy to hear about the need for their countries to connect and how Bullets Books might help facilitate that. Growing up, I, looking back, I loved research, I loved storytelling. I loved coming up with ideas and somehow they just happened. And I got into content and, and um, art. And I started out um, after graduating with an art history and fine arts uh, focus and design history and exhibit design, I, I sort of transcended out of book publishing and exhibits into multimedia and film. For me, it's all the same because it's about storytelling and I feel great that I can move from one platform to another using different techniques, but it's all production and it's so collaborative. And I think it's the best profession in the world. Bullets to Books won Best Short Film at the Big Apple Film Festival in 2020. Also is an official entry in the Manhattan and Global Film Festivals. It is also the recipient of the 2019 Ron Kovic Peace Prize and Humanitarian Film and Best Short Film Award. You can learn more about Bullets to Books on our website at alumni.state.gov. Join us next week for a bonus episode where we talk to Jacques Abraham, the Mandela Washington Fellow behind Bullets to Books. We would like to thank Gail Prensky for being a guest on the podcast this week. And as I would have said, when I was abroad in Russia, Sevo Dobrova i do Sudania, which means all the best until we see each other again. <laughs>